Alexander and in Fugel. Um, the short history reminded me why Franklin Delano Roosevelt was so revered in my household. Good evening, and thank you for including me in your agenda tonight. My intention, when I first requested inclusion in tonight's meeting, was to speak to the issue of community involvement in the common moral question, not the plan's appropriateness. However, I'm prepared to do so now, given that the ambassador and therapy under Gina's supervision has been this case. I will speak as rear president as I make a case for a town meeting survey of the population as we are stakeholders in all Roosevelt Island land use questions. <clears throat> However, I will speak for myself as an island resident as I speak against this particular plan. First, let me say that a fitting memorial to Franklin Delano Roosevelt is about 30 years overdue. Most islanders would agree, I suspect. My objections are to this particular plan. And as a result of eight years of conferring with my neighbors, and with five years as rear president under my belt, I believe many of their objections as well are to the con design. Why? This plan is designed by one of the great 20th century architects, Louis Kahn. He did so 35 years ago, died in 1974, and therefore is unable to speak to the suitability of this plan for the 21st century. I would remind you that before the work to rebuild the World Trade Center site was begun, there were town meetings all over New York. I participated in two. And a design competition among the world's best 21st century architects was conducted. There has been no give and take to the FDR plan in 35 years. Ferry has placed all its eggs in the con basket. And 35 years have elapsed with only $6 million of the $40 million required for the project ever raised. Not that raising this money should be the criteria for construction, mind you. The question is, and always should be, is this the right use of the land? Let's get this, this out of the way first. I believe that this plan is an anachronism that ignores 35 years of architectural progress, ignores the community of 12,000 people that I represent, that didn't exist when the plan was put on paper, ignores the Americans with Disabilities Act that wouldn't be signed into law until 1977, and violates the incredible 360 degree views that grace those southernmost three acres. I did a walking tour with the New York Daily News photographer on Saturday and was reminded of how special that particular facet of the site truly is. The concrete bunker, to my mind, the mausoleum, which is designed to house Roosevelt's four freedoms, puts blinders on the view down the river of Cormorant Island, where these birds fish from the rocks, and of the bridges to the south. The, quote, polarded linden trees, the term of art for this highly stylized double row of trees that will front both the east and west lanes of the three acre lawn, will interdict the spectacular views of the iconic Pepsi sign to the east and the United Nations and Manhattan skyline to the west. Roosevelt can and should be honored, and his four freedoms is the most appropriate. But why not these panoramas? Let's get back to my fundamental question. Who decides? Well, the landlord, of course. Who is the landlord? Well, New York City owned the land and leased it to New York State for 99 years, ending in 2068. The state created the Roosevelt Island Operating Corporation in 1984 to represent them in all questions of administration and development, and Riyadh has done so ever since. Riyadh hired the Trust for Public Land to develop those 13 acres in 2003, and Mr. Stewart and I were pleased to participate in the year-long conceptual plan for South Point Park. This is what the plan looked like, by the way. These are the three conceptual plans that were offered to the community. TPL surveyed park users. Here's what that looked like. Surveyed park users and the community in October. 
October 2004. The results indicated that people wanted the greenest of the three designs designated, quote, wild gardens green rooms with, quote, picturesque nature, artistic landscape spaces, and a mount with elements of surprise and panoramic views as the most popular design element. And they rejected a village crescent with commercial rental space and the, quote, Roosevelt Memorial by Lucan. It has been said that this survey was flawed, the number of people queried was insufficient. I propose that the landlord, the client, the steward of this property be urged, be required, to follow up unilaterally or through TPI to rectify this situation. And while the majority of my neighbors are unlikely to participate in a town meeting or even a survey, I am a firm believer that decisions should be made by those who show up. It is a sad point that over half the people who are um, eligible to vote for the president of the United States this year, president of the United States this year, will decline to do so and have done so for 100 years. That hasn't invalidated the presidential elections for the last 100 years. Things are decided by the people who show up. We were voted in favor of the following resolution. I'll read that to you. River resolved to work with Ferrer to conduct a meeting in March that would inform the Roosevelt Island community regarding the proposed FDR memorial as designed by Lewis County and to take a poll to determine whether or not the community wants the memorial to be built at the tip of South Island. But in retrospect, I feel that a neutral party, Rio, should ask these critical questions within the context of a Roosevelt Island town meeting and that neither I nor Ferrer, advocates for a specific point of view, should be the convener. After all, architects, even great ones, work for clients, not the other way around. It has been said that any edifice designed by Louis Kahn will attract architects from all over the world. This may be true. But I suspect that New York City Parks Commissioner, Adrian Benepin, whom Judy Birdie and I encountered at the Triway Plaza dedication, got it right when he said that they will come out for the ribbon cutting and will never come again. Whom do we build parks for anyway? RIA is a public benefit corporation. Therefore, the public must be heard, and it has not been heard since Mr. Khan presented his design in 1973. I suspect that most of the people who were a party to the original agreement are long since dead or out of office. It is interesting to consider who has expressed a view and who has not. The General Development Plan, written by two world-class architects, Philip Johnson and John Burgess, in 1969, and most recently amended in 1994, makes no mention of FDR, memorials of any sort, or Lewis Kahn. The mighty New York Times editorial page endorsed the Kahn plan, but without ever mentioning that it is only a part of the 13-acre 